In this session, we're going to model a forest with a gradient of size, color, and distribution and density. This will be a cold forest that's cold as we go further away from the origin. So let's begin by starting a new Grasshopper document and copying and pasting our parametric tree into that. So open up the parametric tree, copy the cluster, and paste this into a new document. This will be the tree that we array. You can go ahead and hide the previews here. And go ahead and create two geometry components for the trunk and the canopy. So I'll plug trunk into this one. I'll rename this trunk. I'll hide the wires, right click on it, wire display hidden. And I'll do the same for the canopy. So there's our tree that we'll be working with. We're going to start by creating a grid. Um, a rectangular grid. And this will be our region. And we're going to use this to create a rectangular region that will populate with random points using the populate 2D command. I'm going to go ahead and set a size for my region. So I'll make a number slider from 0 to 360 integer. So set integer here, set the max to 360. I'm going to go ahead and set my starting value to 150. I'm going to plug this in as the x and y size for my rectangle. I could have also used a square. And I'm going to plug this into populate 2D. So we'll populate, randomly populate a two-dimensional region with points. So I'll plug the region, the rectangle in as the region. So now you see I have my 150 by 150 box filled with points. It has 100 points by default. So I'm going to make another number slider and put some more points into this. Double click on the wire to add a relay and clean this up. I'll make that 360 points. So we could move our tree to each of these points using the move to point command and fill up a randomly distributed forest. But we want to make a gradient, so on one of the axes, say the y-axis, the distribution of points decreases. The density of points decreases as we go along the y-axis. So let's draw a line on the y-axis. Type in line, and I'll pick construct line right here. My start point, I'll just place a panel to make my starting point at the origin, 0, 0, 0, and I'll set this to the origin. I'll give it a name, keep this well documented, and my endpoint will be based on this, um, the y size. I need to make a construct point. So construct point. This point will make the endpoint. And the point will be 150 on the y-axis.
So there's our line across the y-axis. If we want to scale this, then we need to add a multiplication factor to this point. So I'll add a multiplication, and what I'm actually going to do is plug this 150 in here, and my b factor can be a scaling factor. So I add another number slider from 0 to 1. And plug that in. I'll just set that to two integers, uh, two decimal points. So now we have a line that we can move the slider along and specify. the length of our gradient. We're going to use the command closest closest curve closest point to find the point closest on this curve to find so we'll plug line in as curve and pop the population of points in as the points. So with our with our line, we're adding all 360 points to it um, where they fall closest to this curve. We're going to extract the parameter from this um, and add a random value between 0 and 1. So I'm going to add a, an addition component, parameter, and I'm going to add a random component here. The length of this, the number, will be based on the population. So I'll do list length. Find the number, 360 items, and plug that in as my number here. My range, 0 to 1 by default. I'm going to plug that in as my b value. Now we're going to use this to sort the list. And our A value will be our population. And our keys will be this, um, this list. Now that we sorted the list, we're going to use it to subdivide. We sorted the list, and we're now going to do um, extract a subset from the list with sublist. So we're going to plug the um, points here, the list of points in value A and as our list. And for our domain, um, we want a domain from some, less than three, 0 to 360. So we're going to add a multiplication component. We're going to put in list length. So we can take this list length and plug it in as our A value. And um, we also want to have, what did I do wrong? That might be neater. We also want to have 
a number slider so we can control this. So I'm going to copy this number slider or make a new number slider from 0 um, to 1 and set its value to about 0.5. plug that in as my A value. This will be my domain. So right now, um, 180, I plug that in, 0 to 180. And I have my list here. And with my cold points. So I'm ready to move my tree to these points. I'll go ahead and move over the tree and canopy input data. And I'm going to go ahead and group this and call this cold point. a name and now we're going to use the move to command to distribute the trunks and canopy across these points so I'll add move to point this is from the puffer fish plugin my first geometry will be the tree canopy my point a will be the origin I'll copy this origin panel I already made Plug that in as my point A. My point B will be this list of points. I'm going to go ahead and flatten point B. And I'll do this again. I might make a point input here too to keep things neater. And I'll go ahead and copy this move to point and plug the trunk in as the geometry for this one. And here's a preview of my cold forest. Now, at this point, we could go ahead and add our custom previews. So add a custom preview and a color swatch. I'll set this color swatch to a nice red, red brown, a dark one, like that. And For my canopy, I'll set a nice evergreen. So that's starting to look better. I can uh, select everything, middle mouse button, and blindfold to turn off the preview. So This is looking fine, but we would like to scale this in terms of size and color as we go um, away, away from um, the x-axis. So let's go ahead and add uh, the color. So I'll add interpolate data. interpolate data and I'm going to move my previews over and I'm going to disconnect this color swatch and I'm going to make three color swatches as my 
input data for interpolate. Let's see the first one. Um, I'll leave a nice dark green. plug these three in. So plug the first one in, shift, click, and drag the second, shift, click, and drag the third. Now, we need a parameter for this. This is going to be a range. Um, the domain will be 0 to 1, and the steps will come from list length. I'm going to go ahead and add a list length here, and I'll take it out of the point right here. So what's the length of this? And I'll plug that in as the number of steps. Plug this in as my parameter, and plug value in as material here. And I'm starting to see my gradient of color. Now, I also want to add a gradient of size, so I'm going to add a scale command. And my geometry will be my move point here. Um, the center of scaling will be the vector from move to point, and I can go ahead and plug that in. Um, so the range is going to um, be the scale factor here, but I need to filter the range. So for range, I'm going to, before I plug it into factor, I'm going to make a graph mapper. So double click, add, type in graph mapper. I'm going to plug range into that, and I'm going to plug the graph mapper into my scale factor. My scale factor is um, for the graph mapper I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to graph type and set this to Bezier. And I'm going to make it start from, I'm going to drag this handle up to the top to 1. And I'm going to drag this handle down to about 0.5 and adjust the curve. And adjust it as to get the type of gradient, the type of distribution you want here. And turn off the previews, and leave only the custom preview, and you have your gradient of size, color, and density. I'll go ahead and group this and name it as um, gradient of 
size and color. And um, there is your parametric uh, grove in a forest.